always got to be like this with me. Everyone else does these little things. These, I mean, not these little things. These little, uh, I'm going to clean it all ratchet, blah, blah, blah. They, they take off two little screws. The whole thing falls apart. Mine is like a fucking three-week project. <laughs> Soaking it in simple green. Using a hammer, for Christ's sake. Ridiculous. It seems like it can never be easy. And we're going to start with... They're both identical, basically. They're both the same model. But you can see that the... Uh, nomenclature is actually in different spots it's actually different overall here it has snap-on GM 70 M made in USA on this one it says snap-on and then a separate line midget GM 70 and below that made in USA now beyond these uh, the, the nomenclature here Made in USA, if you come around to the bottom, it has a patent number. The face plate, the, the bottom plate doesn't have anything. No markings at all. The top has only on and off and the date there. And so all, all the stamping is on the shank here. Whereas this one has the on and off up here. And it doesn't seem to have a date code in between. Uh, then you have the, the normal variation of the of the same nomenclature made in USA the bottom has the patent number but as you come around the date code is here on the side but this one's a seven so this is actually a couple of years old uh, older than this one but it's the same basic thing they changed around the nomenclature they changed around the stamping and they moved the date up to here that was interesting so this is what I bought, I had it for a while, the 7, and I've actually used it, but it finally, you know, broke or failed or, or whatever's going on in there, I don't know yet, I've not taken it apart. It just, this happened by accident, I wasn't trying to buy another one, it just came in the, in the box, I had a bunch of other little tools and, and wrenches and stuff, and sockets. But since this is jam shut, first thing I want to do is, I'm going to try to put some oil in this uh, hole. before I take it apart. You can see how, how the dirty oil is leaking out now. So it softened up the dirty oil in the inside as and that gr grungy crap is coming out of there. Oh, you know what? I think that's not right. <laughs> it did. There was other tools in that little toolbox, but this wasn't one of them, and I remember. I bought a set of Snap-on, um, this really doesn't want to turn. I would do the same. Quarter inch drive sockets, and they were a complete set, both shallow and deep, four through 14. And it came with this little ratchet, which works, and it also came with a small round head ratchet, also snap on, and that also works, but a lot newer. That was maybe from, I, don't, I didn't look at the date, but I'm just gonna guess it's from the um, 80s, maybe the late 80s, 90s, something like that. Nothing, nothing like, you know, this is like 49 or something. But it's really tight. And it feels gummy tight. There it goes. See, it broke free. There it goes. Probably the, the old, see, look at the grit, grit and stuff that came out of there. Probably the, uh, the Baristol oil there. How do, I get the, how do I get the Where's the camera? Helped dissolve some of that dirt and cemented uh, old grease in there. Which is why it loosened up the mechanism, but it even finally soaked into. So, what I would recommend is uh, if you're going to do one of these things and it's really, really, really seized up, get some oil in there. It could be Baristol, WD 40, whatever you want to use. So, that's one of them. Second. Okay. 
with. Now, we should be able to push this and then put, or somehow this comes off, the back plate here. All right, so it's the next day. This is the uh, one that works. What I actually ended up doing after the burr stall, so I took some simple green and I put it in a little, uh, whatever you call this, beaker. And I just let the head soak in there, as you can see. Now we're gonna see if that was able to dissolve enough of the old grease inside it. I think what happens, like with the screws and other parts you'll see and other things, the, um, the old dried grease basically cements or, or glues shut some of the um, parts. They can't move, you know, the screw doesn't turn or whatever. You think, oh, it's rusted shut or whatever. It might not be rusted shut. It might just be kind of glued shut because of the old dried grease. If it doesn't want to come apart like this, doesn't seem to want to come apart. And you decide, well, after doing all that soaking overnight and, you know, it does work now. Maybe I could just leave it alone. You could do that. You can do that. Just close it back up. But what I would first do is now, now I would insert um, the same way you did whatever you did. You know, WD-40 to chase out any water. Let that soak in that for a night. And then uh, some Baristol or some other light oil, machine oil type of thing for this little parts. And it could probably be good for another 20, 30 years. I gotta figure out how to get that plate off though. I'd really like that to come off. Here's my first my first uh, dissection. Old tool dissection. I can't even call it a restoration because I can't open the fucking thing. <laughs> I don't think just taking off the screws is a it counts as a restoration. I never dreamed this would be so hard to take apart. This thing to soak too now. It's gonna take a week to do these two little dudes. It's not quite that easy. Let me get a tiny hammer that I happen to have, a jewels hammer kind of thing. So we're gonna try this little, this dude. Uh, it's a small little jeweler's hammer, but. Uh, It'll actually fit right on top of that disc. See? It is, it is motivating it. Okay, it's working. Now let's make it pop it off. There we go. Jesus, that was hard. Look how filthy that is inside. <laughs> yeah, and this is with... Um, this is with... Uh, Ballastol oil to help loosen it up and then I was soaking it for a couple days in simple green to uh, also you know dissolve the, the old grease which basically glued it shut Isn't that pretty? pretty ugly okay So this comes off of here. This is just a plate. It's quite thick considering how tiny this thing is. You can see the uh, where the oil and dirt, the old grease has been collecting. Now let's have a good look at this thing. So that doesn't look terrible considering. Oh, now this won't come out because this has been peened in. I have to like hammer it from the other side, from this side, I guess, to push it out the back, or out the front, out the top. But let's see if we can get a better look in there. It actually looks like it's in remarkably good condition. It's just, uh, it was so filthy. I think it's just jammed shut. That's why it was locking up and skipping. It was just jammed. That's my, that's my current belief now. 
because I notice now this lever is uh, moving all the way to the left and right and before it, would, it wouldn't quite make it that far it was sort of like struggling to get halfway across and then is you know so it was kind of like being jammed more into the neutral position and then the gear would spin it would catch and not not catch catch not catch and that kind of thing so I guess I'll just uh, give her another soak here now that I can see the parts and see how that uh, cleans up Slosh it around a little bit look at this uh, where's the thing here that was in the uh, solution and this is what washed out so that's probably a gear shaving you know it is probably damaged now that I see that works without soaking it for three days let's see if we can still get it off it's trying to hit right in the middle of the pole the anvil I mean not the pole the anvil It is coming loose. You can see the plate coming up now. It's still cemented good in there. So I'm going to put uh, this as it is with uh, in the in the same solution with the uh, other parts of the other P, uh, the other one. That way, they can both be cleaned at the same time. Come back to it tomorrow again good for tonight did make progress got it open okay we'll see you in a few seconds <laughs> for you hours from me I'll see you in a few seconds when I last left I, I said oh I'll, I'll see you in, the, in tomorrow or a couple days was well, actually been like a week maybe more and I did come in and add more uh, simple green to the solution but in the in during that week my uncle died from fucking COVID, and uh, he was also now we buried him. They, they buried he. He's it's not near me. It's it's another state. And this uncle is my brother, my my uh, uh, father's brother, and he's now in, it was in his nineties. He finally decided he'd had enough. I guess can't say I blame him, but. Uh, Yeah, so it's been a busy couple of weeks here with the old homestead as far as emotionally, you know. I didn't really have to do anything because this is all, like I said, in another state. But, you know, he, he was in his 90s. He, he ran the course. He, he completed the race, no question about it. He had a successful life. He was an artist and a teacher. And so he, he he did his part, you know, he, and he, like I said, he was a teacher, so he, he didn't just do good for our family's uh, life. He, he uh, helped a lot of people, which is great. So he's this artist, like I said, my father was a scientist, his brother. So they were really both interested in the arts and scientists, uh, arts and sciences. My, my father, you know, he liked photography and stuff. And now here I am, uh, an artist, basically is my main job, painting and drawing and illustrating and making things. And in that type of thing, you end up, you know, a lot of the times dealing with some of the quote unquote scientists, you know, chemistry and how to uh, dissolve things and, you know, mix paints and, Sometimes you're welding, or I, mean, I don't do that, but you know, the people make things out of plastics and stuff. That's, that's all part of the sciences, even though they're trying to make something, you know, you could say creative and, and, and be artist, whatever they're making. They still have to learn how to do the basic job. So the arts and sciences are very uh, closely related, if not uh, literally brothers or sisters. In the case of my uh, father and his brother, they were brothers. And they were both, you know, great people. My father died years ago. This is his older brother.
one thing about these tiny little ratchets is it's hard to grab this tiny little thing. If, if you have any resistance, you don't know if it's because you just can't grab it that well or it's actually jammed. So to fix that, I'm going to get a deep well, quarter inch. I can really put some pork on it, yeah. So this is working this way. That's an old uh, snap-on socket, but not as old as these. I think that's from the 70s. It's always gotta be like this with me. Everyone else does these little things. These, I mean, not these little things, these little, uh, I'm gonna clean it all ratchet, blah, blah, blah. They, they untake off two little screws, the whole thing falls apart. Mine is like a fucking three week project. <laughs> Soaking it in simple green. Using a hammer, for Christ's sake. It's ridiculous. It seems like it can never be easy. You can clearly see how this is higher than that. So it's coming out crooked, which is, you know, jamming it shut. Now let's keep on breaking. There it goes. That's completely come out one side. But the other side is wedged in there. I'm going to chase it around with the tiny screwdrivers. There it goes. Jesus Christ. What a struggle. Look what's inside there. Chunks of metal. And this is after soaking, remember. So that's why it was jamming up. Obviously. Because there was crap in there. A big old, like, metal splinter. This is what this looks like. Doesn't look like it's in too bad condition, frankly. So it's probably like a wire that came in through the little hole. This, this is a stupid oil hole at the top, which isn't, it doesn't have a, a any kind of a valve or a plug, it's just a hole. <laughs> so any, any dirt can get in there. And, you know, I'm sure any dirt does. Love to get in there. Th these aren't the easiest things to work with, that's for sure. It's a little flat. Low profile, great. Low profile lever. But it's, it's super primitive and it's actually kind of a hassle to use. But it's a tight fit, that's for sure. Even though it's primitive and old, they, they weren't joking when they made this. They made it to last and here it is, you know. Basically with a cleanup, it's probably gonna be functional. 60, uh, what is that, 60, 70, 80 years later. Okay. Now the other one, the parts are still in the solution. Um, but it looks like they're both gonna work. It was raining all day today, now the sun's come out. Maybe I'll take a walk down to the drugstore and buy a box of, uh, what do you call it? Q-tips. Get in there and sort of scrub around. Well, I got them both apart finally. It only took a month. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. It, obviously, I, like I said, I took a break with the uh, taking care of my attending to uncle, my uncle's uh, situation. What little I could do. I it just basically, I, I didn't do anything really. What, it really mean, what I really mean by that is it uh, absorbed my attention. That and normal life. I had other stuff to do. Um, that I had to, you know, get in the mail, etc., etc. 
Um, and between those two things, I didn't want to think, I couldn't, you know, now start videotaping. <clears throat> this is a lot of work, frankly. I don't know if anybody you guys know that. But people who put these together, if it's halfway decent, if it's not just some person holding their phone in front of the toolbox or the whatever the project is and just like waving it around, that's easy. That's just turn it on, record, and then send it. That they don't have to do anything. But when you get, you know, multiple angles, you get lighting, you can see what you're, the person's doing, um, and that you can hear what they're doing. That means they have a, a couple of cameras. They might have a tripod. They might have multiple lights, not just an open window. The fact that you can even see means they care enough to try to get light on it. Sometimes, they, let me show you this detailed thing, you know, and they, take them to, they, they do it like this a bunch of times. So you can't see anything. There's not enough light, so it's all in the dark anyway. And then always throwing it underground. See that right there? There you go. See that right there? There you go. Do you see that right there? There you go. I fucking hate that. They're always doing this. What are you dropping it for? Stop dropping it. Butterfingers? It's a good tool. Why'd you if it's not a good tool, why'd you buy it? If it is a good tool, treat it with some respect. Dumbass. Anyway, I guess I do drink coffee. Maybe I should go for a little walk, get my coffee, and come back with my Q-tips. All right, we'll try this again later. Okay. Day 42. <laughs> I don't even know how long it's been now. Um, I, this is the original one that I, I actually like to keep with the little 7 there. So these have been soaking uh, in uh, Simple Green for a while. And this is from the other one, these parts. So I'm going to try to reassemble like the best of in this body. I'm going to look at the other ones and see if we can uh, make something nice. I mean, that looks incredible. Especially considering the abuse I put on it. I was hammering away on that, remember? <laughs> looks fine. <laughs> like nothing happened. Ouch. Those little uh, brass fibers doesn't feel good when it goes shooting up underneath your fingernail. <laughs> Just FYI, not fun. Try to avoid that if you can. These look quite a bit sharper. This looks rounded. You know. So. Now I'm going to see if this will fit in here. First you move the uh, lever into the middle position if you can. That way the, neither side is sticking up for the pole, so then this will drop in. Like that. It just kind of clears the way, otherwise you're kind of trying to fight it. Um, but if you put it in the middle, it's just, it's not, there's nothing to fight. So now I'll use the nylon brush in here real quick. Oh, by the way, you, even though, uh, first of all, if, if you work around any kind of a shop, you always hear, you know, wear safety goggles and stuff. And uh, normally you're making something, cutting something, whatever, so you want to protect your eyes, your face. When you're doing stuff like this, Sometimes you think, oh, it's, this is not, there's not even anything powered here, it's just me by hand, you know, what, what can happen? Well, flicking this up can actually cause you to splash in your face. So, at least sunglasses or something like that is better than nothing. Yeah, before I reassemble this, I might uh, rinse them off real quick in clean water, and then I'll give it a quick, uh, a quick, uh, like WD-40 bath, spray down, and then uh, fill it up with normal grease. Now it'd be nice to see if I can what how the poles look in there. So it looks nice and sharp. One. That looks pretty sharp too, actually. I wonder if this is harder than the anvil. That's interesting. Let's 
see how this thing fits together. to decide which way it goes up. I think this way is, is outside. It's interesting. Yeah. It's a lot easier if you put a socket on here. Do I have a socket in the I thought I brought them over here. Oh yeah, here it is. So it works way better. There's <laughs> no question about it. Still feels sounds kind of gritty, but remember this is completely dry. This doesn't have a, a drop of oil or grease or anything in there. And you know, I would say it's also fairly primitive technology. Huh. So let me put this one, the other one together. parts. See, now this one doesn't want to go in as easy. This is what I was saying. This is what I wanted to test. Make sure okay, all the different parts go together in a different way, so otherwise, you know, it can't be done. Like if these, if I do manage to wedge this in here, but then it turns out the screw holes don't line up, you know, because the, the, this plate is from that uh, one and, and this is body is, you know, it's the other way around. Then you end up being like, oh, well, now it won't work. It's impossible. It does work. Mm. One thing about these tiny little things is that it's so small. It actually feels smoother. Because the gear's more worn out. <laughs> because it's broken in, I guess. Okay. Now, of course, you know, it's not working 100% because it's not together. So that's not, don't, you can't, you have to be fair. It's not properly together. So, Maybe I'm using this plate on that one. It's really not easy. So these are the ones that went together before. Of course it works. Also should go together. Yep. It's already halfway fallen in correctly. So it does matter. It's only off by, you know, probably a thousandth or two. But it's, it's enough when it's tight enough when it uh, when it, the fit is that tight. These parts really were made like precision. When the fit is that tight it matters. I mean I I, I would rather it work better and I don't care that much about the scarring there. It is old after all. I mean, I'm only replacing the one part because that's the only thing I can replace. If this plate won't, won't cooperate, I can't keep it. I have to use the original plate. You know, these aren't cross compatible. This one, for some reason, doesn't want to go in there. But this one does go in here, so I don't know what's happening there. I might try a few more times. And then I'll move to greasing it up once I settle, or whatever, whatever's going to work. But uh, right now, my back is hurting. So I need to eventually find a better workbench. This is way too low for me, obviously. All right, so let me give it a few more tries off camera, and then we'll see what I get. Okay, so I took a little bit of um, sanding paper, worn out sanding paper, and I tried to uh, knock down the edges. 
I just, you know, did one of these things, some of this type of thing. Uh, or you can have it down on the ground, down on the table. And then you can uh, skate it along the, along the edge. Trying to encourage, you know, I, I wouldn't do this because you don't want a flat spot. But if you go with the curve, and you don't need to do a lot, it's you know it, it almost fits. So it's it's almost it's only like a little micron out. And then when you get into a shape like this, a corner like this, you know then you can pick it up and gently give it a few passes to match the rest of the thing. But I'm just trying to break some of those sharp edges that are, might be catching here and there to help it fit a little bit easier. I'm not trying to wear out the chrome or I'm not trying to you know reshape the thing. Um, basically it's it's like if you were making this you'd be like it's almost there you know so don't mess it up. You just need a little bit more you know a thousandth of an inch tenth of a millimeter type of thing. Now I was also tempted to try to grind down this sharp edge because I thought that was catching as well. I think it is. But I decided that might also be useful since it's on the outside edge of... Uh, there seems to be a slight bevel on, on the inside of this edge which I think is, help, is supposed to help guide it in. And it's completely flat here on this out, which is the outside. So I think it's supposed to be super tight. This bevel helps guide it in. There's a little chamfer. And then it um, ends up, you know, squeezing out and just being flat across here. There's no edges or, or chamfers to catch anything. It's just supposed to be able to be wiped clean. It's my, that's my guess. So this drops in there. Yeah, it is fitting better. Yeah, it's a lot better. It's dropping down. It's still tight, but it's dropping in better. Now I got these also modern tools here, the 150s. Grab it over here and press gently to the center. Since these two part, uh, jaws are coming together evenly, parallel. It should uh, press them together. It's hard. It doesn't want to go together. Or at least it's, it's not going together easily, but it is going together now. As you can see, the, the edge there like over half in and as you can see here it's crooked this is barely sticking out and this is out maybe half go back and forth but I keep checking to make sure I'm not on the uh... you can actually just put your fingernail over the top of the lever then you don't have to keep checking you just know where you're at where you're at and if you, if you start to feel pain you know you're on the lever <laughs> back up you hear bones breaking back off. Works better in one way, actually, now. But it could be because those gears are worn out. That's what I was saying. So the pole is the same original one, which is probably the least worn out one. And now the uh, I've replaced the anvil with an older one. You can put an incredible amount of force on that thing. These pliers. So it doesn't go. It's almost flush. I'm only going to. Uh, Take it apart one more time just to, uh, now that I know it works. Number one, make sure I can take it apart. Number two, I'm going to grease it. Okay. 
Oh, that feels a lot better. <laughs> Feels greasy. Feel, I mean, it feels like everything's slippery now, but it definitely feels better inside. So if you don't have anything else, you know, at least temporarily, you can use this. I would say that would work in a pinch. But I, I kind of wanted to take it apart and use the. Uh, I, I did buy a, a tube of uh, super lube. Which is what uh, apparently Snap-on recommends. Now this was probably made before Super Loop was made, but so, but I'm sure it still works good for the for the job. And actually, pressing these things, to, these parts together, might be easier if it was lubricated. So that's not a bad idea anyway. I can see the holes are going through. screws for this plate oh it might not matter You can see how it was easier to turn it now. Like I said, it's hard because you're just you know trying to grab this tiny little steel square. It's hard to test it like that. But when I put the ballistol in there, it actually makes it a lot easier. It says it since the, it's not metal on metal clamping itself shut. Oh, it's, no, what was that? Feels like a BB. Why would a BB fall out of there? Oh, it's from the it's from the right thing. It's from here. It just fell out. See, the old ones were shot. So that that's good to know. Now I can take it apart. I mean, it's already come apart. I can just maybe see if I can find a replacement bearing and press that in. I was like, where, where is there another one? It's already inside. I can't get out. It fell out of here. Just that easy. It could be just a cleanup, and then, uh, you know, we'll see what we see in there. I wonder if there's a spring inside here. So I'll put that in here. I guess we're going to have to get back to this. Like I said, it's always something. But it does work. So it basically, it's assembled. And the new one will fit now. Now I can use the new plate and the new anvil for this one. Once again, or at least it's out of the solution. They're both out and clean now, so we can start with the next steps here. <laughs> As you can see, we're moving. We're making progress. We're making some progress. Now, I'm going to try to wrap it up. So the other day, I uh, be, after I I put it together from the last video, I put some of this inside the uh, oil port here which now I've re read that it might not actually be an oil port but I put some uh, WD-40 in there to chase out the uh, water from the uh, simple drain I had just used ballastol which I don't think is adequate uh, for that it's it's great lubricant, but it's not going to chase away extra water and stuff like that. W forty WD forty is actually designed for that. So that to me was like, well, it's that's what it's made for. Let's use it for that. And now let me. Uh, but I didn't do anything else. I just squir squirted some in there, and then I just said, let's let's let it uh, sit overnight, type of thing. 
Now which one's which? This is the, the older body. No, wait. Well, of course I know it here. This is the older body with the uh, with the newer uh, parts inside. So now I'm going to take them apart again. And this time I'm going to properly grease them with super lube. So we get to watch that one more time if you if you want to stick around for that. <laughs> the the tolerances are, are amazing, frankly. It's not thinking that that much that that super tight. So there's the uh, you know you can see there's some oil in there. That that's a little bit of ballastol, ballastol, and WD-40 which I put in. I want to chase whatever water might be down inside. Where the spring and the and the and this this ball is, I'm trying to get rid of that. But there's the paw. Let's have a good look at that. Up here. So I'm a hard time justifying taking it apart further. No, oh, you can even see the the bearing in there. See the little shiny dot down there. That's why I also put the uh, WD-40 in there to help. Uh, chase out the water yeah so if you have a tube of this it's kind of like paint uh, you want to squish it to kind of help mix it up a little bit put the cap on of course because you don't want it to spray you know squeeze out everywhere and just give it a massage that way whatever little solvents and oils and whatever the things are it could for anything it could be for paint too you know you just basically want to encourage it to, to remix so that otherwise you pull the cap off and it just ends up being like liquid will pour out and you can still see the rest of the paint or whatever in there so that's all the binders and stuff separating in the case of paint for example uh, just from sitting around so give it a little bit of a mix and um, help encourage it to kind of go back the way it was supposed to be now let's try that again. And you know, you don't need a ton of this. this. These are tiny little parts. It's not it's not like you're gonna you're lubricating something so massive. I'm just gonna put a little bit more here. Zone. Now this time for the last time. Yeah, so this is squeezing on a lot easier with some lubrication in there, that's for sure. So now I'm going to uh, clamp it down. So it's completely flat. Try not to crush the uh, switch. But if you're on the body, of course you're fine. If you're on the edge there. Okay, that's basically flat. Now, the screws, which I don't think I cleaned actually. Yeah, those are in there. So these are the other ones. Give these a little quick brush. Cleaned up a little shinier than what it was. That'll be great. That's one. Careful. 
That's another good reason to uh, anchor it against the tabletop, your work surface. Because then it uh, can't go, it's going to hit that and not go too far. If you're holding it up in your, up, way up high, you know, near your face or whatever, it could uh, bounce away and who knows where it goes. Okay, so now, try putting that in there. But these are the same screws that came with this plate. I decided, you know, the threads are probably universal, it won't matter, but might as well. So now it's together. The switch is a lot easier. Not nearly as annoying when it's all you know cemented shut not say when it's all put together properly with tightened up everything it works a lot better that point? whoa that feels incredible way smoother way less bad gray and not nearly as noisy yeah this is like a thousand percent better way less back and you saw how little uh, how little lube I put in there so this one is missing the ball but um, this is the one I'm gonna hang on to because I like that side mounted uh, what do you call it date code even though the, it's got a little bit more scuff here. So, so here's this is an update now, months later, and this is the finished product. As you saw, the anvil had worn out and and let go of the detent, so that's uh, gone. But where did it go? You might ask. Let me circle back to that. What actually happened here, this is this is just another half inch, I mean a quarter inch, this has nothing to do with it, it just happens to be sitting there. That's unrelated. The uh, What happened here is I realized I couldn't press that ball back in. I don't have the, the tools and the knowledge and the technique and the, even the time to mess around with it. W one thing I do want to get back to is, let me see if I can put this in the macro here real quick. Once I added the super lube, here to to the equation it made a huge difference and as I kept on using it it got actually easier and easier and easier and also now the switch is goes back and forth with just a push of your thumb just that easy so this is like I said a thousand percent better and it sounds better everything about it is better Actually, I could show you this one, for example. This is one that was made. This is made in the 1947, 1947. It's got a 1949 part in here, but the, the anvil, but it's obviously it's the same model. This was made, I believe, in the 2000s, but I'm not sure. It might be, I mean, I'll put the date up. It's either late 90s or early 2000s. This is their low profile, and this happens to be a quarter inch. So these are technically the same drive. But this was made, let's say, 50 years later, maybe more. And you can hear it's a lot finer. I mean, it's, it is finer. But it's not that much smoother, to be honest. The back drag is not, is not that far apart. And this little switch, this switch is even easier to swing back and forth. 
this one takes a little bit of a push, but it's not at all difficult. It's, it's just you got to make sure you want to do it, and then it'll do it. This one you could almost knock by accident, and it might flip back and forth. This is also a lot lower, so it's going to, uh, you know, avoid being something rubbing across it or you're underneath doing something, and it's going to be trying to switch it for you. Now, this is actually an old Craftsman spinner, thumb spinner wheel, <clears throat> which I like putting on my various ratchets, but that's what it looks like, you know, obviously with nothing else on it. This is a small, I think this is 10 mil. It's hard to see it. So tiny. Yeah, it is. Um, but like doing this, you think, oh, that's not a big deal. I can do that. Then you put this on. And it does matter, by the way, whether the flat side is up, is facing the ratchet or the this little pocket is facing the ratchet. I find that on uh, snap-ons, it's better to have the flat side facing the ratchet and on Craftsman, this little pocket actually absorbs part of the way the original ratchet was designed, so it's better to have that facing the ratchet. But anyways, just having this little thumb wheel makes this super easy. So that worked out great. The repair, in other words, was 100% success. It really is a lot better. This tiny little thing, but you know, it's still useful. I got this because this is actually low profile. Now, this is supposed to be low profile. But when you look at them, you can see that it's almost the same size. And the, the old snap-on might even be a little bit lower because the switch is a little higher here. But, um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. Now, what happened to this one is the uh, anvil, like I showed you already, broke. The, the bearing came out. And I didn't, I didn't have the heart to send in the whole ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> so I only sent in the anvil. I said, I said maybe I wrote a note. I, I called him and I said, I'm sending in this, I'm sending in that. I also sent in something else, a uh, a swivel swivel head ratchet that was missing a part. And I said, if you guys can send me the proper screw. But instead, they just sent me a whole new ratchet. And the same with this one. I said, you know, this one only needs the bearing pressed back in. The gear still works, etc. So I just sent him the gear. I didn't want to send this and lose the body. And instead of sending me back the, the anvil repaired, they sent me this. Which I, I find unbelievable. I haven't opened it or anything. It, it works fine. And when I did get I didn't even know they made a black version like this, actually. And when I did get it, uh, first of all, this little switch is super nice. It's even nicer than the original one. And the... Uh, this is just, another, again, from the same series, another quarter inch. The, the back drag is, is uh, unbelievable. So I was super surprised to say I turned in the old anvil and they gave me one of these. I mean, I'd called it in advance. I didn't just randomly send it in. So I, it was already on the, on the, on the books what they're going to do for me. Um... And I like it. I probably never would have actually bought this, but because I like this so much, and I realized, oh, this is actually a lot better than any of my older, even from the, the, the later ones I have are like from the 90s. That's when I have actually bought my own back in the day, back in the 1990s. Um, and this is still so much better than that, than those. I got me interested in buying some more of the newer series now. So I ended up buying two or three different, um, quarter inch ones which I've kind of been focusing on lately I even bought a, a extra long three eighths but yeah these, these are super smooth super nice and I and I've, I've, I've started liking the uh, the uh, quick release which this, the, that's another reason I got the craftsman so I'm only gonna have a couple craftsmen a couple models I'm gonna have the original style from my father which maybe I'll show a picture of it here uh, his some of his set I still had, and so I've just been buying up the rest to uh, fill in the you know the, the collection kind of thing. But I also like the idea of a, a more modern one. But whenever I buy these different ratchets and screwdrivers and whatever it is, I want it to, re to, to or like camera equipment, like I could say, I want it to be for a different reason. 
In this case, it was by accident. I didn't even buy that. They gave it to me. I didn't want it. Uh, I didn't wasn't looking for it. In other words, like I wouldn't say, uh, "Oh, I got a I got a quarter inch ratchet snap on, and I want to get a, another one, but um, uh, I don't need it. But I'm going to get it just because it's black." I wouldn't do that. So they they did it for me. So I was like, "Okay, well, I got it. I, I still got something to replace this." Again, it was an extra one anyway. I wasn't going to get two of these. But I just wanted to kind of update you here. This is months later. Um, and you can see that uh, it, you know, it worked out. This this got fixed. I got my Craftsman spinner on there. It feels great. And uh, they sent me this as a replacement. So that's the update. If you want me to keep posting more, Or you have any questions, you know, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, and uh, let's see if I can, if I have the answer, I'll give it to you. It's about all I can take. I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm done. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, talk at you later. <laughs> I saw my own shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I almost had an accident with myself. <laughs>